Priority alert. Potentially disruptive non-conformists are loose in the courthouse. Please return to your homes until the situation has been resolved. Have a nice day. <laughs> Hello, all you rock and rollers. Recyclers. Because they totally just rolled their way out of there. And now they're recycling. And welcome to another episode of Back to the Future on Memory Lane Gaming. I'm your host, the Tanuki. What do we do now? Now we wait for the guards to clear out so we can make a break for your time machine. Hey, it's my mom. <gasps> hey! Don't talk to her. She could give us away. Where is the DeLorean anyway? I have the wreck code to my secret lab near Clayton Ravine. Clayton Ravine? As in Clara Clayton? Why? Is that significant? Well, Clara's kind of supposed to be your wife, so yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Shouldn't we go help? Once we go back and change history, none of this will ever happen. <laughs> I guess. Totally just slapped her helmets, but okay. What the heck was Edna doing to you back there? She was trying to rebuild my personality from the ground up, erasing the parts she didn't like. Harsh. Hey, George. Whoa! All right, Dad. What a badass. Totally punched their helmets, but still. No offense, Your Honor, but why'd you marry Edna anyway? She's... she's kind of crazy. Yes, now. But back when we were first dating, her madness was tempered by an ironclad sense of right and wrong. At least, that's how it seemed to me at the time. Mmm, smoochies. Mom! Dad! No! They'll be fine. Once we repair the time stream, None of this will ever have happened. I guess you're right. Hmm. Looks like the coast is clear. Great. Let's go fix the DeLorean. I'm afraid I'll have to do that without you, Martin. Huh? What? Why? Well, from what little I understand of time travel, if you help me rebuild the time machine, your presence in the repair efforts could cause some sort of temporal paradox after we return to 1931. So what am I supposed to do? Just hang out here in Bizarro Hill Valley until you fix the time machine? Exactly. But don't worry. If things work out according to plan, you won't even notice I'm gone. You know, for a second there, you sounded almost as confusing as the real Doc. See? We're making progress already. See you soon, Martin. Good luck, Your Honor. Okay. Oh, and you might want to stay off the streets for a few seconds. Stay off the street. Citizen Brown? Damn it. So, technically speaking, uh... I mean, the time machine should have never been invented in the first place. That right there is your paradox. I don't think Marty, uh, fixing it He's would really... He's not coming back, you know. Matter. What are you talking about? Emmett. Without me to guide him? He's almost useless. Before I found him, he was a miserable failure who never finished anything. But with me to inspire him, look at what we've built! Why does it look like a unicorn pooped on your chest? Yeah, you've inspired him alright. Inspired him to turn Hill Valley into a bunch of uptight dorks. I wouldn't expect a delinquent like you to understand. That's dork delinquent to you. You think you've inspired Doc? I'll have you know that without you, Emmett Brown is destined to build a time-traveling DeLorean and a flying time train. Preposterous. Emmett couldn't even build a dog feeder without me to guide him. Yeah, well he did that too. Yeah. Not the only inspiration in Doc's life, you know. In my timeline, he married one of the sweetest women of the 19th century. Sweetness. Yeah. Emmett needs discipline to stay focused. He's so easily distracted. 
Okay, Your Honor. Starting to get a little concerned here. Hey, there he is. It worked! Ha ha! One second I'm in the present, the next I'm six months in the past! Amazing! Six months? It took you six months to repair the time machine? Six months, my family fortune, and a sketchy deal with a gang of Libyan nationals. But it was all worth it for this moment. Ha ha! Emmett! Don't do this! You need help! Oh, blow it out of your exhaust port, dear. Now that I've escaped into the past, your pack of divorce lawyers can't... <gasps> Mark, how long have you been waiting for me? A couple of minutes, maybe? That's curious. I set the repair time circuits to arrive only a couple of seconds after I left. Oh, well. I'm sure there's no need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration on the time circuits. Yeah, probably. Here. What's this? Clothes for our trip. We can't have you traipsing around 1931 in that ridiculous outfit. Wait, our trip? You didn't think I was going to let you erase the worst mistake of my life without my help, did you? Burn. Fine! Leave! So, okay, I was about to say, how did it take him six months to prepare the war? And if it took him that time long... Time circuit set for August 26, 1931. You ready to go, Your Honor? Call me, Doc. Okay, if it took him that long, did he never change out of his clothes? I mean, he's wearing the exact same suit he was before. Next four exits. And we are going back to 1931. Hopefully it's better this time than the last time we were there. And by better, I mean the gameplay is better. Because I didn't, I didn't enjoy the, the first couple episodes too much. This is where I last saw him. You. Teenage you. You were headed this way, arm in arm with Edna. Ugh. Luckily, my erstwhile wife was never the type to kiss on a first date. If we work fast and stay focused, we can see to it that there... I mean, um, uh, our relationship never moves beyond the hand-holding stage. Well, will you look at that? The old town theater. The man who made a monster. Cool. Very cool. I haven't thought about this place in years. The missus made me tear it down back in 71. Said the movies were corrupting the younger generation. It was all nonsense, of course. I spent countless evenings here in my youth, and it never turned me into a hoodlum. Say, hoodlum. remember Public Enemy? Why, you dirty rat, no gritty yellow belly stool? Hmm. Never did manage to see Frankenstein, though. What you going to now? That's what caused the whole problem, remember? We've got to get young you to see if the C.C. Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Frankenstein. What? Right, right, the... right, 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 of course. The film that was supposed to set off a chain reaction in my imagination, inspire me with a notion that would launch my You've still got no memory of what that notion was? What well, the hell just happened, happened to the audio? The brain of a different Emmett Brown. And Emmett Brown now erased by the shifting sands of time. Luckily for us, I do know something about my own brain, having lived in it for the past 70 plus years. Once we get my <laughs> younger self re inspired by that movie, nothing will distract him from his proper. <gasps> Great Scott, will you look at that? The town square? It's just like I remember it, only dirtier. Oh, dirtier. the old courthouse. Come on now, Doc, you need to. Go inside and check it out. First rule of time travel, Doc, never allow your other self to catch sight of you. It can cause reality to collapse or something. You mean? Right behind you. Don't peek. Go on. 
I'll Fancy let you know when suit. you're gone. And don't forget your Carl Sagan. The billions and billions guy? The suspected arsonist. Huh? Just go with it. <laughs> All right. Um, guess we'll go talk to young Emmett. In his fancy smancy suit. Which I'm guessing probably means we were not here. Sonny! The you time. do show up at the oddest moments. Where have you been hiding? In 1986. Oh, you know, here and there, you're a little hard to pin down yourself. I went looking for you last night, but. I believe I was off entertaining a beautiful lady. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> you know, I never really got a chance to thank you. Well, I'm sure you would have escaped Kid on your own. Kid? Oh, sure, I'm grateful for that, but no, I'm talking about Edna. It's funny to think of now, but until that crisis, I actually thought Edna and I disliked one another. <laughs> Imagine! Yeah, well, we make a lot of mistakes when we're not seeing straight. The thing is, you shouldn't let Edna distract you from, you know, the business at hand. Finishing your project for the expo and going to see Frankenstein. Oh, sure. I'm far too busy for movies these days. But, uh... And as for my project, it's practically done. The rocket car? The rocket car? Boy, are you out of date. I've junked a rocket car. But... More trouble than it's worth. I'll never figure out a propulsion system that does what I want it to do. And besides, its social utility is practically non-existent. Don't give up on the rocket car. Social utility? Since when do you care about... The mental alignment meter is a much more worthy project. The what? It was Edna's oh, idea, what? and she's really been cracking the whip to get me to complete it in time for the expo. Emmett, I'm a little confused here. I only had one day. Right? What day is it? Why, it's opening day. The opening day of the uh, expo! Which reminds me, I'd better skedaddle back to the lab. If Edna catches me dawdling, there'll be heck to pay. Catch you around, Crockett. October 12th! Doc? Great Scott! Quick! Run to the courthouse! Quick! Into the door. The door. Door house. Yes, the door house. Come to think of it, it is a bit brisk for August. Oh, we're two months late. The expo's about to start and Teenage U is already in over his head with Edna. I always did have a tendency to plunge into things. Let's plunge into the Ooh, DeLorean and get to the right date. Oh, no, it's far too risky. Remember how I was late picking you up in 86? Yeah. That should have been a tip-off. Something is horribly wrong with the time circuits. And the problem appears to be getting worse. If we try to jump now, we could find ourselves stranded in the Cenozoic Age. Oh, oh, oh worse, the Mesozoic. Then we're stuck? For the time being. I'll look into the problem and see what I can do. In the meantime, you can go to work on the other problem. Right. I'll go to the lab and see if I can talk teenage you out of... Impossible. If young me is already as infatuated as you say, you're not going to be able to talk him out of anything. Believe me, I remember. Better to focus on the more clear-headed half of the couple. Edna? Where can I find her? Where do you think? I'll drive. The DeLorean should still function adequately as a means of conveyance in the first three dimensions. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so I have to convince Edna to break up with him? That seems... weird. Hill Valley High School. Hill Valley of the Past. Well, that's pretty on the nose, isn't it? You were right. There she is. My soon-to-be ex-future wife is nothing if not predictable. Do I really <laughs> have to talk to her? I mean, couldn't I just hang out until you fix the time circuits and... Oh! Ooh, I'll talk to, talk to her. You better get the DeLorean out of sight before someone... Hey, you! Quit blocking the drive! All Car of the Future contestants need to report to the North Tent! Why well, I guess that works, too. Good luck!
still pretty much looks like nothing that's driving around currently. I mean, not even remotely, but let's talk to Doc. What does she have to say? Edna? Oh, I, I haven't talked to her yet. Well, what are you waiting for? We need to get those kids separated. Yeah, those kids. Oops, the DeLorean. I shouldn't go anywhere until I've talked to Edna. Okay, that's the DeLorean. I guess we should talk to Edna. Spell it! B-R-O-W-N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love... Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual... Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting-edge technology. That's right. And to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward-thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear. Mr. Crockett! You do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? I need to... Whatever it is, I hope you don't have to oh, deal well, with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Uh, Have you seen Emmett? Kind of a low blow. Yeah, just yes. now, in the town square. Oh, then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think, he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. I've never known anyone like him, so oblivious to his own potential. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought I didn't even like him. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I don't get it. I mean, Emmett's nice and all, but he's not exactly the kind of guy that has girls swarming all over him. Well, I'm not your average girl. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Crockett, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Two T's Emmett even. Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Okay. Let's talk to Guy. Hey, excuse me. Yeah? When does the expo Not open? Not tonight. Anybody without official business here, please get off the grounds! You got Ooh. official business here? Yeah. Well, stay out of the way of the workers. You look familiar. Do I know you? Uh, nope. Do I need to get something to help pull that stick out of your ass? Jesus. What's going on over here? Truck! It's not as nice as my truck back in 86. Jeez, I hope I still have a truck back in 86. Yeah, I hope you still have an 86 back in 86. Oh, Hill Valley of the Future. I can't actually seem to do anything with the Hill Valley of the Future or the past. Or this plaque. So... I guess I'll go talk to talk. Well? See what he has to say. I talked to her. And? She says she knows what she's looking for, and it's you. But it can't be me. It wasn't me. Marty, we don't belong together. You don't have to tell me that. Find out exactly what her requirements are. I can almost guarantee you that I don't fit them. Okay. So now I have to figure out what it is that she likes about him? Ahem. <clears throat> you said that Emmett fits your bill of requirements for a man. Yes. What would what that list be, exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Crockett. You know that? Well, his physical appearance, for one thing. Emmett may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. 
and he's completely devoted to me. That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. Faithful as a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, Labrador. and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain. Mind I map. see. And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Uh, just curious. Just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? Cub Reporter? Rather hard for me to picture Emmett as a chick magnet. Chick magnet? A guy who gets the girl's, you know, motors running. Motors? Who makes them, y you know. You mean a chic? Yeah. Well, it's a matter of taste, I suppose, but when he's properly pomaded and decked out in my grandfather's white suit, and it just glows. Makes my heart flutter a bit just to picture him. Hmm. You say you know Emmett as a model citizen, but you don't know him as well as I do. Did you know he once cheated some Libyans out of plutonium? Plutonium? What would Libyans want with plutonium? I'm sure he had a very good reason. Emmett's mind map demonstrates conclusively his brain is oriented toward virtue. They stole one time, a train. To power one of his science experiments, Emmett hijacked a train. Please, there hasn't been a train hijacking in Hill Valley since the days of Mad Dog Tannen. Well, you know, my vice principal. Emmett's hates done a him. lot of shady things in his time. My vice principal warned me to stay away from him. Your vice principal sounds like a dolt. <laughs> Uh, that's funny because my vice principal is Strickland related to her in some way So you say Emmett only has eyes for you? Absolutely. It's almost embarrassing how devoted he is to me. Well, it's good to hear he's finally settling down Yes Settling down, you know ready to stop playing the field as it were playing the mm. oh you're joking But I can't help feeling sorry for him who? All of Emmett's other girls, now that he's with you. Please, I think I know Emmett by now. There are no other girls. Not to say there aren't other boys. Huh, I wonder what's going to happen to Emmett's little black book. Little black book? Oh, it's legendary. That's what enabled Emmett to become the, uh, Valentino of Hill Valley High. Gee, I wonder if he'd let me have it. You must think I'm pretty gullible, Mr. Crockett. What the heck is this mental alignment meter of Emmett's? Oh, it's an absolutely revolutionary invention! Measures a person's affinities, what he's attracted to, what he's repulsed by, that sort of thing. Interesting. And it really works? Well, of course! What's the point of inventing something that doesn't work? Or, anyway, it works well enough for my purposes. My purposes? Eh, no, That's I have all the questions I got. Very well, then. Trixie! Hey, Artie. You seen my Orioli? You oh, mean oh, this? What? Yeah, Ariola. thanks. Oh. She gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. So have you seen her, Ariel? Hey, Artie! Officer! Officer? Oh, right. Don't blow your cover. Will you please keep your mind on the task at hand? Can't talk right now. Boomer. Guess I'll go talk to Trixie. See if I can't see her areola. <clears throat> to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. Uh. To all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Artie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, uh, forget about it. I'm trying to. 
Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Right. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? Is uh. that code? At the expo, silly. Technology for a better tomorrow and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. Hmm. She's awfully cute. So, who are you supposed to be? Don't you know your Homer? I am Techni Muse of Progress. You can tell by the lightning bolts. Must have slept through that class. I'm supposed to be a goddess like. I'm the one who inspires all the great men who make the discoveries. And women, too. Leave us not forget Madame Curie. I never would. So, yeah. you work for the expo? Yeah, ain't it a kick? I greet all the important guests, and on the final day, I get to bestow the golden sundial on the winning contestant. Sundial? Why not a wheel? Techni, Muse of Progress. Not a bad gig. Audie got it for me. It's my entree into respectability. Entree? Like... food? Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Audie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. <laughs> I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Then you see where I'm coming from. He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? Sometimes a guy's got to resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Ah. Edna Sorry. might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, <laughs> such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni Muse of Progress. Okay. So, Artie's working for the Expo, too, huh? Oh, Artie's doing swell! The papers made a big deal of him testifying against Kid. People have been beating down his door ever since the trial. He exposed Don Lucky they could get him. What's Artie's job? Oh, he's a real high muckety muck at the expo. He's in charge of all the money and the hiring and firing. Hey, not bad. You're telling me, and super respectable too. It's a real relief for him to have a job where the boss never pulls a gun on him. Hmm, I bet. How's Kid's trial going? Slowly. You know what they say. The wheels of justice grind slowly, but infinitely fine. Except in Hill Valley, where they don't move at all. What? Nothing. It's just, you know, something I heard once. So no regrets about turning him in? None at all. I should have known better than to take up with him in the first place. But what can I say? I was dumb. I let myself get taken in by his charm. Charm? Yeah, charm. Whose idea was it to put a science and technology expo in Hill Valley? Heats me. Audie says it's all bread and circuses. But I ain't seen a single clown yet today. Aww. See ya, Trixie. From this chamber of wonders, we bid you a fond adieu. Adorable. Um... Hmm. Now what? Guess go talk to Doc again. Ah, good. You're back. Give me the full report. She says she likes you because you've got a virtuous mind, you look good in a suit, and you're completely faithful to her. Damn! She's got me dead to rights. Well, you'll <laughs> just have to find a way to change her mind. I'll be here if you need any help. Do you need any help? <laughs> Have you figured out what's wrong with the time circuits? Not sure. Possibly. It seems to me to be a simple wiring issue, but I'm double-checking to make sure. All the basic equipment appears to be functional. Um, any chance I could borrow the DeLorean? I want to drop in on young you at the lab. Well, I don't know. The time circuits... Listen, I promise I won't take it to 88. Even so, I'm worried about letting it out of my sight while it's still behaving unpredictably. Tell you what, I'll take it on a test drive one minute into the past. If it passes what? the test, I'll let you borrow it. But you just told me that using it to time, tra time travel whatsoever is bad. Hey, 
work. Didn't it? I'm afraid not. In fact, the discrepancy appears to be getting worse. I arrived six hours ago. Oh, too bad. I didn't want to risk undoing any of the work you've done thus far, so I kept out of sight. But the time lag wasn't entirely a waste. I stopped by the hardware store and bought the part for a chronometric analyzer. A what? what? A diagnostic <laughs> device. See, I plug it into the time circuits and set them to cycle. When the green light goes off, I should have the data I'll need to understand the scope of the problem. Hey, no driving the exhibits off the lot! Looks like you'll have to find another set of wheels if you want to get to the lab. Okay, well, looks like Hill Valley of the Future's open, suddenly. <clears throat> oh, got an itch in my throat. Anyway, this has been an episode. Next episode, we will hopefully, uh... Try to dissuade Edna from, um, Young Brown. Yeah, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for joining.